YouTube, my name is Mesa Sean, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Alright folks, I guess the worm has turned for me. I think Bungie is actively trying to convert me from a Warlock main to a Hunter main because there are just too many options, I feel like, for the Hunter this season with the new exotic boots, which we're going to talk about. And I finally changed up a lot of my mods. We're going to go through all of that and some of my weapons that I'm using also. Last season, if you, well, well, have been following me, I've been constantly rocking the Wrath of Rasputin build and using splash damage to make Warmind Cells. Well, we're going to still make Warmind Cells, but we're going to do a lot of other things and dive into the Charge with Light system and also the new exotic boots, pairing them up together. But in a nutshell, the new exotics, well, they make, uh, they make the supers absolutely ridiculous and arguably... I'm going to say the new exotic boots are probably the best exotic armor piece in the game right now. I hope Bungie does not touch them in terms of, uh, you know, Bungie likes to nerf things that get a little bit overused, but we'll see what they do. Anyway, let's get into the video, guys, okay? If you enjoy it, please hit that like button and leave me a comment. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, and let's get into it. So first off, I got to admit, guys, I'm, I'm back on the light subclasses, mainly Night Stalker and Gunslinger. Not so much using stasis as much. And let's talk about the new exotics, okay? So you can get these from the Lost Sectors when it is Legs Day. And I did videos on the new European Dead Zone ones, but at the time of recording this video, they're not dropping legs and there's no Lost Sectors Legend or Master on the European Dead Zone. So we have Feast of Light, right? So you gain additional super energy from orbs of power you pick up. Now one thing to know, you will notice when you create orbs of power from masterwork weapons, you will see a significant amount of super energy compared to if you did not have these on. Normally when you pick up orbs of power from a masterwork weapon, well from masterwork weapon kills, you get a little bit of super energy, but with these on, you get a lot more. So you will notice a lot more supers coming your way. Then, while your super is full, picking up more orbs of power, it's going to overcharge your super, okay, which is great. Uh, it will stack up to four times, only four times. So ideally, you want to get it to a four stack before you pop your super. Then, it's going to cause you to gain a burst of healing when you cast it. It can come in handy if you're, you know, you're in a pickle, you're low health, cast your super. And then also, you're going to get bonus damage to your super damage. Um... That's redundant. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of damage from your super when you have that four stack, okay? At maximum overcharge, you also gain an overshield. So that comes in handy as well. But frankly, guys, I don't even notice the healing stuff. I'm using it for the damage right there. So what I find myself is not really using stasis that much this season. Uh, I'm using Night Stalker and Gunslinger. And it's bizarre to use Gunslinger because I've, man, I've not used Gunslinger in a very, very long time. Uh, but let's talk about Night Stalker first, okay? And then we're going to go over all the mods I'm using, weapons, so forth. So, for Night Stalker, there's two ways that I like to run this, okay? Top or bottom. Now, top is obviously the long one where you drop it and it lasts a long time. You tether a lot of ads, but you're going to do a significant amount of damage as long as you have that stack of four times Feast of Light. And, um bottom tree i noticed a significant amount of damage i mean we're talking more than celestial nighthawk i think um we were doing the prophecy dungeon and when we got to the final boss i had a four stack and i was running uh, i was running bottom tree and i hit the boss uh, with all my tethers and my god his health just dropped like a fly it was ridiculous so you could use it either for just like insane dps here or insane DPS also here with tethering a whole bunch of ads, especially in Override when you have a whole bunch of yellow bars and champions and other big enemies you need to take out. So, yeah, I've been using Night Stalker a lot more with these boots. Uh, I'm not using Orpheus. Well, uh, where's Orpheus Rig? <laughs> I'm not using Orpheus Rig anymore, which is sad to say because that's all I use for the longest time. Now, Golden Gun. This is bizarre because... I almost, the only time I would ever use Bottom Tree uh, Gunslinger was, uh, let's see, for the raid for Deepstone Crypt with Celestial Nighthawk, but you actually can get a bit more damage, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, guys, I'm not a numbers guy, just know you get more damage if you get the full stack and you use Bottom Golden Gun, okay? But also Blade Barrage too. I used to use Blade Barrage only with Shards of Galanor. 
But even then, I really wouldn't use that often. I wouldn't use Golden Gun that often, period. But what I find is when you use Bottom Tree Golden Gun, and you get that four stack, um, you will see some sick damage to yellow bars, to bosses, to everything. And bottom tree, I mean, I forgot even how to use it for so long because I haven't used it. Like, um, you will notice, knock them down. Precision kills increase your stability in your handling. Your super does more damage when cast with this, uh, while this buff is active with 20 or more seconds remaining. You've got that big old weighted knife. And then you have line them up. This, this really comes in handy. Enables precision damage with golden gun. And precision hits with golden gun is going to generate orbs of power. Increase its damage and extend its duration. So you combine line them up with the new exotic boots. Man, it's a win-win situation. So let's talk about mods. So like I said before, uh, I'm not running the, well, yeah, I'm not running the Wrath of Rasputin build at this time right now. And for the curious, in terms of transmog, really haven't done anything yet. I still love my Deep Stone Crypt gear. Haven't really found anything else in terms of sets that I really like for the Hunter. I'll probably do the first year Solstice of Heroes gear when we get the glows back at some point. And I'll probably end up turning the Deep Stone Crypt uh, armor pieces into ornaments at some point when the Vault of Glass gear comes out. But let's go through my mods, okay? So first off, um, I go with Taking Charge, okay? So become charged with light simply by picking up orbs. So this comes in handy while grabbing your super. But then also remember, you can keep picking up orbs um, once your super's charged because of the new exotic boots. So we've got that. Then on my class item, I'm going with Blast Radius because I'm either going to use a rocket launcher or a grenade launcher. You'll understand why in a second here. Then from here, I use High Energy Fire. You can mix, uh, you can mix and match this one here. So with Charge with Light, you get a um, you get a bonus to weapon damage, and each defeated combatant will consume one of those uh, Charge with Lights. Um, if you want to be a little bit more safe, you can go with Protective Light, where you gain damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. But I want more damage, okay? So I go with High Energy Fire. Um, and then I go with Chosen of the War Mine simply because I'm running the Ikelos machine gun, uh, submachine gun here, so I can create uh, lots of War Mine cells. Okay, and then because I am creating War Mine cells, I put Global Reach on. So War Mine cells that I create um, and damage, they're gonna. Well, okay, War Mine cells you create affect and damage targets at a greater distance. Sorry, can't read today, guys. So that's what I'm using. Now, in terms of weapons and the rest of the mods, let's tie them in. I don't know why I have Sword Ammo Finder on there. So, okay, I usually run the Ikelos. Now, this is like Season of the Grenade Launcher, okay? Grenade launches are amazing right now. So we have what's called um, Breach and Clear. So when using a grenade launcher, damaging a boss, damaging a champion, or breaking a combatant's shield, Reload your stowed weapons. Okay, that's cool, but it's going to cause the combatant to take uh, increased damage for a short duration. So I mainly use this as a debuff. Now, in terms of grenade launchers, you could use a lot of different grenade launchers for debuffs, okay? Uh, you could use Anarchy. Anarchy is probably one of the best exotic weapons in the game. We use it for a lot of endgame content. Um, I, for some reason, like this crowd pleaser here. Don't know why. It's void. It's got field prep. Any grenade launcher with field prep, I like. I do have a few uh, Swarm of the Ravens, but I just tend to prefer the crowd pleaser for some reason. Uh, other grenade launchers. Salvenger's Salvo from last season. Now, you could use this with either Vorpal Weapon on bosses, or you can do Chain Reaction. Each final blow with this weapon creates an elemental charge. I go with Ambitious Assassin because sometimes I'll just kill an ad, and this way, instead of one in the tube, I'll have two in the tube. Or you could choose to go with Demolitionist. And any legendary grenade launcher you get, you want to try to get it with Spike Grenades. Um, I will be doing a YouTube short. And you know what, guys? You know, sound off in the comment section. I need to test this. When it comes to champions, right? And you pop them with a rocket. Because you guys, if you've watched my Lost Sector videos, I usually will stun them and hit them with a Coldula rocket launcher. Should I be using boss spec or major spec? I keep hearing mixed opinions in my channel member Discord nonstop, okay? I don't know which one, but I'm going to do a test and make a YouTube short. Which, uh, which one you should be using, boss spec or should you be using 
mage spec because I think champions are considered mini bosses, right? Well, it does say mini boss when you kill them, right? So, and also for my primary, you could also use Wither Horde because that also ties into Breach and Clear. So that's another real cool mod that I like. Um, I put on, I'm putting on all intellect uh, for the most part. Intellect, well, I put grenade here, but I should be putting intellect right here uh, because I want to get my super as quick as possible. And why don't I have here? Yeah, okay, we're gonna throw another intellect on. Sorry, I was messing around with the mods before. So mainly putting on whatever grenade, uh, whatever ammo finders I need. I should be putting submachine gun ammo finder on here, but do I have enough energy? Uh, I don't see no I do have enough energy there we go beautiful okay because sometimes because I'll be using this so much to make orbs so I can get the feast of light going and then at the same time make those lovely war mine cells uh, let's see anti barrier auto rifle I had that on before because I was not using outbreak for the first time I'm gonna go over my favorite uh, roles and weapons from this season I got tons and tons of new weapons to go through with you guys uh, rocket launcher reserves. We got rocket launcher scavenger and grenade launcher scavenger. Um, you know, now you know what? I should be putting, yeah, grenade launcher submachine gun. Yeah, that's what we have on for this build. We're good. So, also with the season artifact, I did a YouTube short on War Mines Decree. Uh, void splash damage. Final blows have a chance to create War Mine cells. What you want to do is uh, put on good old graviton lance. Okay. And in that YouTube short, I showed you how not only uh, will the Void Explosions create War Mine Cells, sometimes the explosions will then blow up that War Mine Cell. So that goes in very, very handy with this here. Uh, I've messed around with uh, Sundering Blast, but can't really tell if it makes that much of a difference. We also have Unstoppable Grenade Launcher. I don't like it, okay? You have to wait for it to proc. There is a timer on it. It takes up seven energy. All I'm going to say is for this season, and this is my opinion, do, do what you want. All I'm going to say is for me, Devil's Ruin, Devil's Ruin, Devil's Ruin when it comes to Unstoppables, okay? One, it's so easy to stun Unstoppables. Two, the fact that you hold down the trigger and fire that strong laser, this thing annihilates not only champions, but also like high level enemies, yellow bars, orange bars, bosses, yeah. Devil's Ruin, I think, is probably, in my opinion, the best sidearm in the game, okay? I, I'm not a, well, I need to dive into the new Stasis one, but I'm sure everyone else um, has done some in-depth testing. But for me, I love it, and also because it's solar too, I don't know. So like if I see a solar yellow bar, a solar enemy, a solar wizard, I'm gonna hit him with Devil's Ruin with the laser beam, take the shield down, and then probably take half their health down, depending on how close I am to them. So yeah, that's what I wanna cover in this video, guys, but right now, really digging my Hunter. Um, I also have the Future War Cult shader on, as I showed you before, or as you probably noticed before representing future war cult because if you watch my spoiler video you know something's gonna happen at some point which i'm going to shut up about so season rank 47 just grinding things out my hunter is let's see yeah 13 1322 with the seasonal artifact and still grinding so that's it for the video guys let me get old hashtag made it to the end if you did make it to the end and do me a favor drop a like in this video only if you see fit Follow me on Twitter at MesaShawn. Check out my stream. Usually no always on YouTube, and that's it. I am out of here like Vladimir.